the INFP personality type is not all daydreams and emotions. What lies beyond our creative and gentle nature? Stick around and find out. What's up, legend? It's Sherman here from Geek Psychology, where I help INFPs to understand themselves and utilize their personality type for self-development, to find their spark in life, to set off on the journey to become their own hero. And there are a lot of stereotypes about INFPs, and some of them are true, some aspects of them are true, but a lot of them have a deeper reason, a deeper purpose, a deeper meaning, or it's misaligned. So I want to give seven of the standard perceptions of INFPs. And then after that, we'll talk about seven different deeper aspects of INFPs that you may not know. Or if you are an INFP, then enjoy. <laughs> enjoy listening to someone else explain what is going on inside your mind and your heart to the best of my ability as well as an INFP. INFPs are highly sensitive and emotional. There are many truths about this. And something that I found out is throughout my life, I started out as extremely sensitive and emotional. And it was overwhelming. I didn't understand myself. And there were so many different cocktails of emotions. And then I got to a point where I was just like, I'm never going to feel any emotions ever again. And I did my best to become a robot. And as well, I was gonna say, as you can see, I'm not a robot, but maybe I am. Maybe I succeeded. Next, creative and passionate. Yes, we are extremely creative. Our extroverted intuition is always looking for new possibilities, new opportunities, new ideas, new ways of mashing different things together or finding different novel uses for an item or an idea. It's a lot of fun. And that can create passion, it can create curiosity as well. But our, our introverted feeling, what I call the resonating soul as a character within our psyche's questing party, is so passionate about things that it has attached value to. If it decides that something is important, then it is on a crusade to make sure that, that thing is protected for good or for worse. Next, introverted and reserved. Yep, yep, I would spend all day by myself if I could, just exploring my mind or different stories. And that's not necessarily a possibility. I've resorted to saying I am shy as a way of shortcutting this huge emotional leap and all these different other explanations, but I am reserved. I'm more defensive. I'm not going to go approach everybody and proactively shake hands and hug it out and ask a bunch of fluff questions or any questions probably. And that's because I am reserved. And as INFPs, we want to understand the thing before we deal with it naturally. It's like a cat putting its toes in the water, right? It's testing it out a little bit and then it can decide if it's going to jump in or go do something else. And it's probably not going to jump in. Next, value-driven. As I mentioned before, our values are extremely important to us. If something steps on one of those values, then we get angry or we get really hurt. And it's inexpressible in a lot of ways. And it's something that often we don't even have language for ourselves, but we feel kinesthetically that this is extremely important to us. And so part of our journey in growth as an INFP is to label those values, to understand them, to have a hierarchy of values and to regularly assess those. This is something that we go through in the I Now Feel Positive INFP Masterclass. You can go to infp.geekpsychology.com to get into the masterclass and learn more about your personality type. And we're idealistic as well. We have these fantastical visions for what things could be. Hopefully it's how wonderful things could be. Often they get stuck in these repetitive loops and they can be depressive and it can be a very dangerous and bad place to be. But when we look at relationships and different possibilities for our future, oftentimes we think of all the wonderful things that it could be, or we have these stories of our relationship with another person and having kids and 
living in a, a an awesome palace and all this other stuff. And we just met the person. It's like a huge, massive leap into what this person's potential in my future could be. Let me know if you resonate with that one because maybe I'm just crazy. We are prone to daydreaming and escapism. Daydreaming is so fun. I remember being in school and looking at the teacher and then being like, well, what would the teacher look like with this strange, funny hat on or with wings and doing this different thing and doing this different thing and just making stories about whatever I'm seeing. And that has continued throughout my life. It had, it's not as exaggerated now as it was when I was younger, which kind of makes me feel sad. But I do constantly make stories in my mind about different characters, myself being one of those characters in different lateral worlds, different parallel realities. And even with people like walking by on the street, I'll look at that person and make a story about where they're going, where they're from, how they're out to save the world or whatever fantastical thing that I'm into at the moment. And for me, that has been a form of escapism in the past. Hopefully, it's still not now. Maybe I need to del delve into that a little bit more. But it's getting out of the mundane, boring reality and enjoying emerging idea space. And it's so fun. And last for what most people say about INFPs is that we struggle with practical matters and organization. Yes, our extroverted thinking is like buggy AI. And we're trying to get it to go on this quest with us to save the world or to make things right or do good. And we just can't get the organizational stuff happening. I often said that I'm organizationally challenged. I try not to use words that are not supportive and don't serve me anymore, but I do feel that it's true. It's hard to get things together in a line to make goals. And through a lot of planning and research and learning about it, I've improved at it. And you can too, by setting your goals and breaking them down and finding ways of measuring them and selling yourself on taking the next step, whatever that may be. But I think it's always going to be a bit of a struggle, a bit of it just needs more attention and energy than feeling and creating ideas because of our personality type structure. Let's talk about seven things that are not often mentioned within INFP memes. These are things that you might not know until you get closer to us. First, INFPs have a very powerful moral compass. If something does not feel morally good or ethically good or whichever word that you like better for that, then we really, we clash against it. I was coming home from my daughter's school. I took her to school on bicycle. And then I was coming back and there's a vending machine. And I believe there's a, a can and plastic bottle depository like basket thing behind the vending machine. And then off to the side, there's a little opening between the vending machine. And there's a fence and a little opening. And this old guy who was like, he had properly combed over hair, gray hair and had a polo shirt on. He looked like he wasn't homeless. He could afford things. He was on a bike and he was just like throwing away his glass bottles and plastic bottles and stuff in that little corner. And I, my mouth, my jaw dropped. I was shocked by him doing something that I cannot imagine doing. And I almost stopped him and asked him what he was doing because there's a place over there a block away that he could throw them all away or he could just hold on to them and throw them out on the proper trash day. It was just really confusing. And there's such an internal like push against that. And that's just a simple little behavior. When it gets bigger and it's about actually physically hurting people and doing things that are really morally wrong, it's so hard to be around. And we will find a way to not be around it or to stop it. Unfortunately, usually it's to not be around it. But sometimes we do take up those crusades. My aunt, who is an ISFP, said that she is the conscience that nobody else wants to have. I think that's a pretty well said phrase about introverted feelings. Next, we are capable and very good at inspiring other people with our authenticity. We can exude this leadership type energy. 
and other people, when we do it right, when we've developed ourselves and we're not in the I'm broken and everything sucks in the world phase, we can really step up and we can attract a lot of people to our character. And I think that's something that the world needs more of is more INFPs who are stepping up into leadership positions. And you don't have to be an ESTJ or an ENTJ to be a leader. You have your own ways of doing it. You could be like Mother Teresa or something like that, where they exude this, this feeling, this sense that other people see and think, oh, maybe I should be like that person in some way. Or how do they do that? And they get curious about it. That's a good way of being a role model. Next, we are fiercely loyal to those who are important to us, our loved ones. We will go beyond anything. Once we've created that bond, it's so hard to break. And it can be broken. And it's really painful when it is with everybody too. But for us, like we don't spend a lot of time bonding with a bunch of other people. We find one person that we want to support one-on-one, -on -one, that we want to fuse with and connect with one-on-one. -on -one. And we will do pretty much anything to maintain that relationship, to keep it going. Um, I still have some people from my past who we had a falling out or bad things happen or whatever, but I would still, no matter what, probably be there to support them if they needed help and give them another chance, which is not always great, but it is something about us that can be a good thing. The endless capacity to forgive somebody and to know that people can change and improve and become better people. Next, we are driven by a rich internal world of ideas. So before I talked about daydreaming and escapism, but there's so much going on underneath all that. My wife is an ENFJ, and when she sees me not talking, not interacting, and I'm in my own world, I'm doing so many things in there. I'm having all these different stories going on, I'm thinking of all these different things, trying to plan things, imagining a bunch of different options and possibilities, and trying to sift through to feel which feels right. There's a lot of stuff going on inside. And just because we look aloof doesn't mean that there's nothing going on underneath. We often find joy in life's simple pleasures, whether it's when I walk outside my house and I look over to the left in the direction that I walk towards the train station and I see the tree and the green leaves and I feel the breeze. I'm just like, life, yeah. And it's not a sensory experience as much, although I have trained myself to do that a bit, but even just like little sparkles on the side of the road or sitting underneath a tree in the grass, reading a book, just being maybe in nature by yourself, letting things just be natural. There's such a joy in that. And unfortunately, it gets stomped out quite a bit by the fast paced hustle and bustle of the world. If you are an INFP, I suggest you find ways of increasing that finding little things to be happy about and capturing that little bit of gratitude. Because when you're constantly looking for things that are not supporting you from your past, all these bad experiences that you had that mean that you can't become somebody else or some different, more powerful version of yourself, it helps to counteract that by finding things to feel gratitude about. Even some phrases in books or poetry or music little ways that things are constructed sometimes can go in and just feel amazing. And it's just this little thing. It's just this little thing that most people would not even pay attention to. But for some reason, it struck a heartstring and it really means a lot to us. We also possess a unique ability to connect with other people through emotions. This, oddly enough, is not the other person's emotion, but we see it, we experience what's going on out there, and then we try to find our own closest replication of it. So we go inside of ourselves, and then we create that emotion. And I find that very fascinating, us creating this emotion that is hopefully the same or very close to this other person's emotion, to actually feel it within ourselves. It's not like taking their emotion and putting it within us. It's 
putting ourselves within their shoes and then experiencing their emotion. What would it be like to be this person, to be with this intention and these emotions right now and this goal and all these different things, all these past experiences? What would it be like to be that person? And from there, we adapt some of that emotion. It goes really deep and it's different. It's different from how extroverted feelers do it. And because of that, we often can create space for other people's emotions, for other people to be themselves, whoever they are, and to just allow them to, as long as they're not hurting anybody, like you do you, and it's okay. You being you to the best of your ability is all the world could ask for. And so we often support other people to become that to the best of our abilities. We're not necessarily, again, extremely proactive about making sure it happens, but if somebody has an issue, if somebody wants to do something, we will be there to be their support, their pocket healer, their guide, their mirror, or their person that they can just talk to and reflect over as we listen intently with all of our... And the last one that might surprise you, even if you are an INFP, is that we can do very well in unconventional crises, and we can find solutions to complex problems. This is a strange point because our extroverted thinking is so low on our stack. It's such a troublesome character. But the way that we do it is through having this calm within us in times of crises and the ability to imagine many other different possibilities, different options. It's not a focus, this is the thing that's going to happen, but it's a flexible nature that is connected to idea space. So as an example for this, and I don't want to get too deep into it, this is not the place to do it, but I was in an altercation with the Yakuza here, a branch of that. And it was my friends versus them, and we were doubly outnumbered, and everybody was going crazy. There was a huge like, group of them versus us, and bad things were about to happen. My life was threatened, and if things didn't happen as they did, it would have, I wouldn't be here. But in that time, I was so calm. I was so relaxed and also confused why everybody else was going crazy over all this other stuff. It was like I just centered myself. And this isn't to brag about who I am or anything like that, but this is looking at the power of having spent so much time delving into who I am as a person trying to understand my emotions, trying to control them, trying to stop them, trying to increase them, doing all these different things, playing with emotions. I was able to just choose the one that I needed to have in the moment. And everything was quiet. And that was one thing that allowed us to be safe afterwards and to have a different relationship going forward with that group. And so we are innovative. We are the innovating souls, as I call it, within the RPG model. And this is because we can innovate new creative possibilities, new ways of dealing with things, especially things dealing with the heart and other people individually on a one-on-one -on -one basis. And if you want to know more about your personality type, you can go to inowfeelpositive.com, inowfeelpositive.com, and you can get the five-day email course on being an INFP and it teaches you more about all the different the four different cognitive functions and how to embrace those different aspects of yourself. If you want to delve even deeper into it, check out infp.geekpsychology.com and get the I now feel positive masterclass. If you're not ready for that yet, you can check out this video over here. And you can do it the long way and learn more about yourself through your own research. All right, good luck, have fun. Peace.